Chapter 1. Sent Away Deborah's mother looked down at her five sleeping children. She had not slept all night. In a few hours, the sun would come up. It would be a new day, the terrible day she would have to give her children away. Deborah's father had left home to sail the seas in search of adventure. Now he was dead, drowned in a shipwreck at sea. Deborah's mother was sick and poor. She could no longer take care of all her little ones. She touched the sleeping children one by one. Her hands stayed the longest on Deborah's soft brown hair. You are most like your father, she thought. It is you I will miss the most. Deborah Sampson was only five years old when she had to leave her mother and her home in Plimpton, Massachusetts. It was the year 1765, ten years before the start of the Revolutionary War. She was sent to live with Miss Fuller, her mother's cousin. Cousin Fuller was sweet and jolly. She never had children of her own, but she knew just what would make a sad little girl happy again. She baked cookies for Deborah. She gave Deborah a bed of her own, a soft feather bed that she did not have to share with anyone. Deborah loved her kind cousin. Miss Fuller taught her how to spin and weave and how to make bread. But best of all were the wonderful hours of reading lessons. Deborah learned the alphabet by heart. She learned to read quickly. For three years, Deborah was happy. Then one day, Miss Fuller became ill. Three days later, she was dead. Deborah cried, Dear sweet cousin Fuller, she had been like a mother to Deborah. Deborah was now eight years old and without a home. Her own mother was still too sick to take care of her. She tried to find another place for Deborah to live. The only person who would take Deborah in was 80 year old Mrs. Thatcher, who lived in Middleborough. Mrs. Thatcher must be the oldest lady in the world, Deborah thought. Mrs. Thatcher was too feeble to do anything for herself. Deborah had to do everything. She had to feed old Mrs. Thatcher like a baby. The old lady could hardly lift her spoon to her mouth. Deborah did all the hard work, too. She carried in heavy loads of wood for the fire. She kept the fire going and swept up the ashes. She washed the clothes and did all of the cooking. Every day was like every other, full of hard work and loneliness. It was too much for an eight-year-old girl. But there was nothing else Deborah could do. That's how it was for a poor girl without anyone to take care of her. If only I could see my mother, Deborah thought over and over. But her mother lived too far away, and besides, who would take Deborah there? Sometimes Deborah thought she did not have a friend in all the world. She was wrong. The minister of Middleborough thought about Deborah often. He came to see how she was getting on. He saw the feeble old lady nodding her head by the fire. He saw Deborah growing taller and thinner and paler. The good minister made a promise to himself. I will get this child out of here, he said. He kept his promise. Mrs. Thatcher was sent to live with relatives, and Deborah was sent to live with Deacon Thomas and his family in the same town of Middleborough.